In our last few programs, we've taken a look at trends moving down a family or down a group. Now we're going to look at a trend moving across the periodic table, and particularly those of period number three. So we're going to look at the formula of the oxide combining with the various elements found in period number three. First off, when oxygen combines with the first few members, our magnesium, sodium, aluminum, we form ionic compounds. When that oxygen combines with our latter elements, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, we find covalent compounds. Now, let's take a look at the formulas that result from these combinations. In this table, I have the element on the left-hand side and the actual formula of the oxide on the right-hand side. At first glance, there doesn't appear to be much of a pattern to their particular formulas, but let's look a little bit more closely. First off, I'm going to identify the number of valence electrons that each of the elements have in period number three. You might recall that valence electrons are those in the highest energy level. So here, in the case of silicon, for instance, the 3s2, the 3p2, those constitute the valence electrons. As we move across the table, we can see then the number of valence electrons in period number three elements increases sequentially, one through seven. Now let's look at the third column that I presented here in the table. At first examination, you notice that all of the elements have a, a subscript of two. If you take a look at the oxygen, its subscripts increase one through seven, moving down the oxygen side. Now, these don't quite match the actual formula of the oxide, but if we take into account some of those that can be then reduced to lowest terms, for instance, magnesium-2, oxygen-2, forming magnesium oxide, we can then see the pattern more clearly emerges. The silicon with the oxygen and the sulfur with the oxygen can also be reduced. This pattern holds pretty well true with the exception of one combination, phosphorus with oxygen. Let's take a look at the acid-base nature of these oxides when they're mixed with water. Metal oxides, when combined with water, form basic compounds. And here's the particular balanced equations that show that. The reaction of these metal oxides with water results in the production of the hydroxide ion, which makes the material basic. However, if I take my metal, non-metal oxides and react them with water, I produce acids. In the first situation with phosphorus oxides, I produce phosphoric acid. We perhaps might recognize this as one of the ingredients listed in several soft drinks. And the latter one, sulfur trioxide in water, produces sulfuric acid, a much stronger acid. At some point, there's a division, a switch, from the acid nature to the base nature, and that happens at aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide is considered to be amphoteric, meaning it can behave both as an acid and a base. Here in my first example, here's aluminum oxide being mixed with a base. In this situation, the aluminum oxide is acting as an acid, as the two react to produce a neutral compound. In my second example, aluminum oxide is being mixed with hydrochloric acid. So in this situation, the aluminum oxide is acting as a basic compound. So we can see as we move from left to right across the period, we move from a very strong base to a neutral compound or amphoteric compound at aluminum oxide, and then to increasing acid strength all the way over to the chlorine oxides. So that completes our look at unit number three, and our next unit will take a look at bonding. Again, comments are always welcome, and thanks for watching.